Okay, we are going to do another pod review again today, and it's on that pepper right back there. If you look back there, you see those red ones? That pepper is actually a fish pepper, but some of you may or may not notice, fish pepper sometimes puts out a red version of what it is. So sometimes the fish peppers don't come out variegated for whatever reason. So usually you cull those seeds off as they ripen, you phenotype only the striped pepper. So this is one of those pepper varieties. You got to constantly have to separate the red seeds from the striped seeds. You're always going to have to do that. It does lessen in time if you do it all the time. You don't want to mix your red version of the fish pepper in with your striped versions because you contaminate it. The red versions almost always come out red, though they do sometimes throw out some striped versions as well. But in general, the red versions usually always stay red. So I usually separate them or I just simply don't save seed to them. But I do keep seed for that and I do separate them and I sell that separately as the red variety of fish pepper. So back there, I've got about four or five or six of those. I got to get a ladder to get up there and get those out, guys. I can't reach across what you see right here. I mean, it's all the way up to the top of my ceiling. There's no physical way I can actually get in there. So let me get those peppers off the plant, and then we'll be right back, and we'll give you a better look at them. All right, we do another pod review today, and it's going to be on this pepper right here. And this is called the fish red pepper, or red fish pepper, as I'm going to put it on the website. Basically what this is, is it's a fish pepper that's red, and this is a fish pepper what it looks like before it's red. These are generally what you want to see with your fish peppers. Now, every now and again, your fish peppers will throw out a red version of the pepper. These will turn red, but sometimes they really are, they, they don't have this variegation in them when you plant the seeds from them. So you really have to kind of keep track with fish peppers, which peppers are going to more likely bring out the variegation. And so you have to make sure you really phenotype these good. If they start turning full red without any striations in them, they're more than likely not going to produce the variegated look that you see there. So with those peppers, you end up with these. And these are a red version of the fish pepper. In general, this plant doesn't show much variegation at all. Though at times you'll see some of the leaves will have some patches in them, variegated patches, but in general, it's mostly just regular pepper, plant look-wise. And you'll get these kind of peppers come out of here, which are generally red. You don't see any striping in them at all. So when you got those kind of plants, you need to separate them from your regular fish peppers. This is going to be the case year in and year out. There's no phenotyping. It's just the way the plant is. And if you don't do that and you start mixing all the seed together, you're really going to contaminate your seed stock from the quality of your fish peppers because most people come to your site to buy fish peppers because they're trying to buy the variegated version with the striped peppers like that, not these red peppers. So I separate these and I normally toss the seeds. I don't even keep them. But I figured I'd offer them as an alternative to my visitors, to my website. So if you want to just try the red version of it directly and grow it yourself and see if you like it or something, I figured I'd offer it anyway. It's not much of a big deal for me to build a web page for it and then put these on there and then you can try them and grow them yourself if you want. So they will be available. Just keep in mind, it's not a regular striated variegated fish pepper. You're going to get a regular plant out of it. Now, with that said, this plant does carry the variegated gene in it, the albino gene. And because of that reason, at any time, it can re-manifest itself as a fish pepper. You might get one seed out of 20 seeds that'll come up fully variegated and striped. So it's still going to carry that gene. It's just for some reason in these red versions, it tends to be more dormant. So just keep that in mind that uh, when you save your seeds, you want to kind of phenotype these off every year because this plant will always do that. All right, so without any further ado, let's give it a go. Okay, so there is a good amount of tanginess with this, but at the same time, it was very sweet. It was very, very sweet. These red ones are sweeter than normal. 
Whereas the fish peppers that are normally striped, they're normally eaten in that striped stage. They're not usually waited till they turn red, because they will turn red eventually too. But they're normally served and cooked and used in that striped stage, just the way they are when you're eating fish with them. That's why they call them fish peppers. You could probably do the same thing with these if you're going to eat them in the green side. They'll probably have the same flavor. But the red ones have this, I don't know, um, tangy flavor to it, almost citrusy like type flavor, and a lot of sweetness. There was a lot, it was a combination of both. The tangy part was a little stronger than normal, and that's probably why they go good with fish because eating fish, as some of you may know, like me, I like to put a lot of lemon on my fish when I eat it. I just love to put lemon on there. I like that tangy, soury type flavor. It really, really goes. So peppers that tend to be tangier like this will go really good with a fish dish. They really work together really well. And that might be why this pepper was really chosen to be used in, you know, serving fish dishes because these fish peppers really tend to be a little bit more tangier than normal and they just work together really well with fish. So you would eat your fish and then you pick up one of these peppers and you just bite it and you eat it with your fish goes really good together that way. But the red ones, yeah, they're just as tangy, I would imagine, as those. We'll, we'll check those at the end of the year. We'll do a proper pod review on those. When they get, start getting orange, I'll start picking them off at that point. And we'll do a pod review and really get the taste. But these are pretty good, too. As far as the heat goes on this, it's pretty mild in heat. I'd have to probably say, at a worst-case scenario, 800, 1,000 at a worst case. That's the hottest you'll probably get it. This particular one was probably around 200 or 300. So you're going to have a range in there from like say two to 300 in heat all the way up to where it might be 1,000. If you grow it out in full sun and in your yard, you might even get this up to 1,200 or something. But that's it. I mean, you're not talking about killer heat. As far as the other pepper goes, I don't know. We'll have to wait to the review on that. We'll talk more about that when we get to it. But this one, as far as the way the, the heat goes and the flavor, that's about where we stand. It's, it'd be just considered a low heat pepper. And as far as the way it's affecting the tongue, it's just kind of tingling up the end of the tongue a little bit. My lips are really getting tingled around a little. A little bit, tiny tingly on the back of the throat, on the tonsils. But that's about it. Maybe a little bit across the top of the tongue and a little bit towards the edges of the back of the tongue, very slightly. It's very minute. It's really hard to even pick it up. The biggest thing I can say about it is the heat on the lips is really where it is. And the other big thing about this pepper that makes it prominent feature about it is the tanginess was really tangy. It wasn't like tangy, uh, like a soury type tangy. It was like almost slightly lemony tangy type. Didn't taste like lemon, but it almost had that lemony type of tanginess to it. It was kind of citrusy almost. That was really the most prominent thing about it, but that's it. That's your pod review for the red fish pepper. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.